right now. Let's get you the next installment of our magical journey down the River Nile. Let's see what the team has in store for us today. We now go live to CCTV's Penina Karibe, who is in Cairo. Penina, good to see you again. What do you have for us today? Thanks, Mahia. We're live in Giza the home of the Great Pyramids. And just behind me, you can see the magnificent uh, structures. These are the major attraction here in Egypt. It is day five of our continuing special coverage of the Nile. We began in Aswan, south of Egypt, and then we went on up to Laksu, the home of some of the greatest temples of ancient Egypt. We took you on up to Delta, the country's uh, uh, food basket. And today, we're here live in the home of the Great Pyramids. I am joined by Mohammed. It's a sunny day here in Cairo. Mohammed, how are you doing? I'm doing fine and it's worthy being part of this magnificent plateau here. At the back you can see the great uh, uh, pyramid. But let's start with, do you know who was the first to give the world this pyramid shape idea? No, I don't. It was King Snefru of the 4th dynasty to give it to the world and ever since was associated with Egyptian culture. And I think one of the greatest things about this pyramid is the fact that uh, it, it's especially the one behind us. This is what is referred to as the Great Pyramid of Giza. At 146 and a half meters tall, at some point, it was the tallest man-made structure in the world for 3,800 years. Actually, lots to tell about the Great Pyramid. It was built by King Carthal, and there was a nice, interesting story to tell about the Nile and the pyramid. Uh, during flood months in Egypt, where there obviously people cannot go farming because of the floods, there will be like plenty of people unemployed. So Kofu decided to employ them, provided them with food and treated them very well. People were thankful. And more, one more thing to add is that it took them 20 years to finish it. Can you imagine that? That's a lot of investment, Mohammed, and 100,000 people. I mean, it's little wonder that it's withstood the test of time and it makes one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Exactly. And one more thing again to add is that they used uh, the Nile to get rocks down to this position we're standing in. That brings us to a very important question nowadays. Can the Nile play an important role in helping Egypt dealing with its transportation problem? Yasser Hakim has more to tell. The pyramids are primarily made of sandstone which is abundant in this area. However, certain parts of the structures, such as the inner sanctum, required the builders to use the hardest possible stone in order to keep them secure. This meant granite. But the closest source was Aswan, almost 1,000 kilometers to the south. Henny Darwish has been working here at Giza on the outskirts of Cairo for 18 years. He is among the city's most accomplished experts on the pyramids. So, uh, how did they transport uh, the granite? They transported by the Nile, by boat in the, in the Nile, the strong uh, cedar boat from, from Lebanon. There are the harbor here, the, there are the branches here of the Nile, ah. and the, this harbor near the very temple of, uh, of Kefri. So, so, it's just in front of the Sphinx? Yeah. The water yes. was, it was passing by through? this area. Okay, and the, the, the branches from 5,000 years ago until uh, 200 to years ago. It there was are, all covered with water. Yeah, there are a branch of the Nile here. There are plenty of options for transportation here in Cairo, but the Nile beats them all. And you're going to prove it today because you're going to have a race. The river against the road. Yasser against my friend, Adil. How are you, man? Well, I wouldn't be that confident, Yasser, because if you take a look at the road, it seems quite clear. And in this long distance, I believe the Nile wins every time, and I'm going to bet on that. We have a race from here until the Lions Bridge, Qasr Neil Bridge. Are you up to it? I'm up to it. The Ready? Ops. Three, two, one. Let's go.
much better than the usual. We're almost halfway there, so I think we might win. It depends on the second half and that's always crowded. God, it's so slow. I mean, where's the wind? He's telling me that the wind, there's no wind today, so, so he can't really move that fast. Whilst the wind hasn't yet filled my sails, idols finally run into Cairo's legendary traffic. It will be very crowded. Not many Egyptian drivers respect um, the law. And for example, this street it should be only two lanes, but as you see, even our taxi driver is moving in the middle and the third lane. The winds finally started to pick up, and that gives me a chance to get back in the race. With no traffic to contend with, I'm there in minutes. But Adil is not far behind. Hopefully arriving by boat means I can draw up closer. I'm here. Where's Adil? Ready to jump in the Nile? I don't have my swimming suit. <laughs> so even now, the Nile is the best way to travel. Let me take you to drink. Yeah, please. You need one. Wow, I would have put my money on Adel, but I guess one of the interesting things that have emerged out of that report is how significant the Nile was in the construction of these great pyramids. And let's discuss that a bit more. We have here Walid El Batuti, he's the area representative for the World Federation Tourist Guide in North Africa and the Middle East. Walid, thanks for joining us. So sure. uh, how exactly did the Nile contribute to the construction of the pyramids? Well, because if, if the Nile was not there, we wouldn't have the pyramid. I mean, uh, the civilization was based on the Nile. As the Greek historian Herodot says, Egypt is a gift of the Nile. And I also add to that, Egypt is, gift, uh, Egypt is a gift of its own people. But as you know, where we're standing right here, the Nile has come all the way here. At this right, very spot? Uh, yes, exactly. Right. The, we're right at the foot of the pyramid. And the Nile has come over here because they transported the blocks in the construction of the pyramids area. Uh, on barges, on boats, and it came all the way here. So what we would say then, if I may cut in, is that the pyramids, as we know them right now, would have been on the banks of the River Nile. Uh, with, 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 uh, during the flood, yes, it came all the way here, mm -hmm. but they had canals that bring the water of the Nile all the way, and it, right in front of the Sphinx, right. there was like a big open lake, and as I said, the Nile has come all the way where we're standing so right Mr. here. So Mr. Batuti, can, can you tell us more about the pyramid shape, secrets behind that and theories of building up the pyramids? The secrets, it is not being revealed yet. It, that's the mysterious thing about the pyramids of Giza. It still has more to come. It did not reveal all the secrets. Uh, the interesting thing, that's the only remaining wonder of the ancient seven wonders of the world that is still standing. And it's on the bucket list of every child on earth he would always, they say, between third grade and sixth grade around the world, kids around the world, they say, I would love to go one day to Egypt and see the pyramids. So that's the one very interesting about the Giza pyramids. And the pyramid shape. The pyramid shape, uh, the Egyptians build the pyramids on, the side of, on this side of the river due to the fact that they have seen the sun rise in the east and set on the west, rise in the east and set on the west. Mm -hmm. So to them, uh, they, the living side was the east, the dead side was the west, Valley of the Kings, Valley of the Noblemen, Valley of the Workers, the pyramids, all sorts of pyramids in Egypt throughout ancient Egyptian history was on the west bank of the Nile. The shape of the pyramid, it has a geometrical, uh, uh, unbelievable story. And uh, it takes hours and hours to explain this. But you have to understand another thing. In October, for example, the pyramids line up with the, uh, perfectly with the, Orion, with the Orion belt. The Egyptians were very advanced. That's why we say we have a stone age between us and them. And that's why everyone around the world should come to Egypt now again and see the new discoveries, the new work, the new uh, sites, the new Egypt. Very interesting indeed, and that will take us to Femida with a report about Cairo at night, especially downstreaming the Nile. Let's go to see what has she got.
when the sun goes down, the neon lights come on and Cairo comes out to play. There's no end of choices if you want a night out on the river. In Cairo, partying on the Nile is part of everyday life. My guide for the night is journalist Nada Barakat. She's lived in Cairo all her life and knows the best places on the river to visit. Nada, the atmosphere is unbelievable out here on the Nile. There are tons of boats with beautiful lights. We hear the music blaring. What do people do on a night out on the Nile? They take a boat, have some, some food on it. Sometimes they take their friends along, go for Many things, people have the birthdays, sometimes for people who cannot afford a, play, a hall for a wedding or something or a big venue, they just rent a small boat and they have the wedding on it. Apart from locals, I'm also I'm sure that the Nile is also very important in the tourism industry. It's very attractive to tourists definitely, as well. Definitely, definitely. It's a big spot for tourists, uh, especially those from Gulf countries and the Arab region. They come for it all the time and they love to rent boats and to take them for dinner. Actually, it tours a very long distance in Cairo. It can take you to half Cairo by the night. At its height, more than a million tourists came to Egypt each month, collectively spending more than $12 billion a year. This river, this nightlife, was one of the reasons they came. It's not always clear what people are celebrating. At times, it seems it's enough to be young, Egyptian, and on the river. Egyptians are active and lively by nature. They want everything to celebrate everything. They might just be like celebrating someone's passing an exam, or someone dating a new girl, or someone being engaged. We have all sorts of celebrations. We celebrate everything, every time. Neon-lit party boats like these navigate the Nile throughout the night, while boat restaurants line the riverside. Here, much of the menu is tailored for tourists. But what's the classic local dish? For that, you need to step away from the river. How much would a cup of hummus cost? Okay. Yeah, how much is he saying? He said between five to ten. He said seven and a half pounds, but it's actually for five pounds or ten pounds. So it should be about less than a dollar for a cup. Definitely, of hummus. one for seventy cents, and the other is for one dollar. And is it a major business for vendors? Is food really street a big food. business in Cairo? Street food is a real serious, serious kind of business for Egyptians. It's all over town. It's all over the, the country as well. Hummus soup is a great street snack, but nada has something more substantial in mind for dinner. This is El Rifai, one of the most popular restaurants in the city. The menu is very basic, but this place is really quiet. Its reputation for some of the best kebabs in Cairo is probably why. That's good. It's well mm. worth the wait. This place has also been really busy through the night. Mm. I understand that it's very much a place where not just the community, but people from all parts of Cairo exactly. come to. Exactly, and it gets busier and busier as the night gets in. After midnight, usually famous football players, uh, celebrities come over, and everyone can come for here because it's affordable, it's nice. As you, know, as you know, it serves very good kebabs. It's unlike any other place in Egypt. In one night, I've managed to pack just a few of the Nile's many attractions. But I've run out of time. As the rising sun calls time on the festivities. At least for now. It's very interesting that people from all walks of life in Egypt go down to the Nile to have fun. Mr. Batute, let's go back to our track again. Would you think it would be appropriate if we get the Nile up here to this point again? If they take the, if, if they take the right measurements to protect the uh, um, uh, monuments and everything, yes, why not? I mean, everything could be done okay. with the modern technology today. 
Yes, and we could uh, actually add more and maybe do uh, trips in a time machine, go back to ancient time and things like this. Uh, it could be done uh, with the right measurement. Before we wrap up, can you tell us more secrets about the pyramid you haven't told us so far? One very interesting one is that if everybody thinks that the uh, once the pharaoh was dead, they bury the wife and the and the servants and the slaves. The issue of the slaves has been killed totally scientifically. Uh, the workers they have a, a, a tomb where a, a village where they all get buried there, and the wives. No, the pharaoh was smart enough, as we say, as a, in, as a fun. The pharaoh was smart enough not to have his wife with him in the afterlife. They have their own tombs, and bear in mind, she's the mother of the upcoming pharaoh. So no one uh, would kill the, the pyramid. Is a single tomb for a single person to be buried inside. Wow, and that's, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. I guess that's that's quite amazing just having this huge structure and one person there. I mean, it would be a tomb for just one person. Walid, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. We had here with us Walid El Batuti, area representative for the World Federation Tourist Guide in North Africa and the Middle East. And I guess also quite interesting how the Nile is a classic example of how we could use our rivers to decongest the cities all across the continent. So why not join us on our journey on the Nile and share with us the examples of how you in your countries are using your rivers, if at all, to as one way of transportation to decongest the city. You can tweet us. Our Twitter handle is at CCTV News Africa. You could also drop us a comment on our Facebook page. It is CCTV Africa. And of course, we're going to sample some of those comments later on in the day at 1700 GMT. Oh, my yeah, that's all for now. Thanks for joining us. Back to you. All right, Penina, thank you very much for that fascinating insight into the nightlife in Cairo as well as the majestic uh, pyramids in Giza. Uh, they are, of course, in Cairo as part of our ongoing coverage on the majestic River Nile.